Welcome back everyone to part 2 of the Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials. Uh, my name is Reese, and today what I want to cover is uh, yeah, 2D top-down collision for side-sprewing platform games. Now, um, this topic has been covered um, yeah, previously by a lot of other YouTubers, but I just wanted to cover this purely because it's in the context of Delta Timing. Um, yeah, things work slightly differently, however, it generally is the same sort of process. Um, so, in the previous video, what we did, I'd recommend you looking at that if you've not already looked at it. We sort of this initialize object, and um, it basically contains all the variables you require for actually uh, getting to grips with using delta time in your game. Um, so, yeah, in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on this new object I've created, uh, OBJ player, and um, yeah, OBJ wall. Um, one main, yeah, one thing to note, sorry, is that uh, OBJ wall needs to be solid. So just make sure you've got that checked. And other than that, um, it should be good because I've already made a sprite in the background. It's just an orange square. That's all we really need. But um, yeah, we're gonna be doing all this code in the player events right in this video. So it's gonna be quite a, a smallish video in comparison to the first one. So, um, the first thing you want to do is set up some variables. So, pr originally, um, yeah, we used the speed variable, and I've changed it a bit in this tutorial because what we actually want to do now is get the relative uh, speed vector uh, compared with the direction up and down, like the horizontal and vertical component, sorry. So, um, I'm going to change that to x speed, and then I'm also going to add a new variable, uh, y speed. Um, you'll also notice um, I've created two new variables. I've got gravity is set to 0.2 and gravity max is 0.91. Using 9.81, sorry, because, um, yeah, that's actually the force of gravity on the Earth. Um, I just somehow wanted to incorporate that into the game and uh, it tends to work quite well with, like, um, yeah, I forget the name of it now. Um, yeah, the point where you reach the highest possible velocity, terminal velocity, that is it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, I think that is all we need to do for the create event. Um, yeah, just make sure you've got key up, key left, key right, uh, direction X and Y, X and Y speed, and then your gravity. That's the only real thing you need in the create event. Um, we're going to be doing all the stuff in the step event, so. Um, yeah, so the step event. Uh, originally had keyboard check and that was odd W um, but we want to change that in a platform you don't really use W to jump in a platform you use space so I'm going to change that from odd W to VK space um, and then we can weave key left and key right the way they are um, yeah so let's get right into this the first thing I want to handle is the uh, Y why, well, well, yeah, direction. Um, get the wire out of the way first because we have to deal with all the gravity and stuff, and that tends to be more time consuming than the X. So, um, once we've got this out of the way, we can basically copy a lot of code. So, um, so the first thing you want to do is determine the player's Y direction. So, direction underscore Y equals uh, sine open bracket Y speed. So sine either returns negative one, one, or zero, depending on the yeah, the actual sign of the value. That is, yeah, um, we're going to need that in the calculation. So uh, pay close attention to that. Um, the next thing we want to do is actually update the y speed. So the first thing is uh, we want to check the gravity. So do y speed uh, plus equal. Uh, the gravity variable we created, gravity, uh, and then pay attention here, multiply by the frame delta. Like so. Uh, we're using the frame delta to accelerate the gravity because uh, that's an acceleration that's occurring there and we want to make sure that the player's accelerating due to the game's current speed. Um, yeah, but here's the thing, we also want to only make this occur if the player 
is um, not colliding with a floor. So um, we can simply do if uh, not place meeting open bracket uh, x and then we can simply do y plus 1 because that's one pixel below the player uh, obj wall. And that's basically going to prevent the player from accelerating downward this, like, if it's hitting the ground. Uh, we also want to close it off with a bracket. And yeah, that's that. So um, yeah, on to the next part. So um, yeah, so next we want to check the jump and update the Y speed if necessary. So um, yeah, we want to check the, like, the, yeah, the jump key. So simply do if open bracket uh, if we can type today <laughs> k underscore up so that's simply just checking the k up value if it's one uh close that off with a bracket so if you pressed the actually that should be keyboard check pressed like so uh and yeah if you pressed the space bar you then want to check if the player can jump so uh if place meeting x y uh plus one obj wall so what that's doing that's essentially checking if a wall instance is underneath the player currently and if one is it's going to allow him to jump uh that's basically going to prevent him from jumping mid-air uh, and unless you're having like a double jump mechanic, I can't see why you'd really want the player to jump midair. So uh, then we just simply, um, yeah, do uh, y speed equals negative six. Negative six just tends to work for me for my current setup. Um, yeah, um, why am I not using delta time here? Uh, the reason is. Um, this is not an acceleration that's occurring here. I'm actually physically setting the value. Um, if I was changing it dynamically like what I'm doing here, so relative addition, uh, that's where you need to use the frame delta. Um, I'm not setting it here because this is just a permanent speed um, and it will get accelerated over time by the frame delta anyway in the next step, so um, it doesn't make a difference in this one step. Um, there's also one more thing I need to do here. Um, if place meeting, oh, actually, sorry, if not place meeting, uh, x, and then do y minus 1 obj wall. So that's also going to prevent the player from jumping if there's something above him. And if there is, it's just going to make him not jump. So, uh, yeah, that should be good. So that's the jumping sorted. Uh, then we need to check the vertical collision. So this is the good bit. Um, yeah, something to discuss here. Um, what I'm going to do is create a while loop here. And you've always got to be cautious about how you use while loops. Because um, if you don't break out of that loop then you'll stay infin like infinitesimally in the while loop and it'll crash your game. Um, so you want to ensure to 100% that you break out of that loop. Um, otherwise you're going to end up with some shady collision bugs. And in my next tutorial I'm going to be covering uh, collision systems for top-down games. And I am going to show you guys an alternative of how you can avoid using a while loop. Uh, in the collision system. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to use a while loop because it's quite simple. So we're going to check if place meeting and then the x coordinate and then we want to do y plus open bracket y speed multiplied by the direction of y. So what that's going to do um, it's going to take the y coordinate of player um, and then add uh, the y speed in the direction that the player is moving in. So this y result value can either be negative y speed or positive y speed. And uh, 
you often see in other tutorials what people do is like sign uh, Y speed. Um, it's essentially the same thing, um, but taking into account that we've created a direction variable, uh, let's just state a conformity and make it a bit more simpler. So, uh, yeah, Y speed multiplied by direction Y. Whoa, hang on a sec, here goes. Uh, just a, a bit of an error I've made here. Um, the y speed variable can actually be positive or negative, and when I wrote this code, I wasn't actually aware of that. Um, so, in this one instance, we don't need to multiply by direction y. All we need to do is just uh, the y value plus y speed. That is the only thing we need to do. <laughs> Alright then, back to the video. And what that's going to do, that's going to check um, ahead of time where the player is um, relative to the speed in front of them. So, and then we can check the collision before it happens and then stop them dead on, like, as they hit the ground. So now we want to enter the while loop. So the first thing we want to do is do while uh not place meeting and then do x y plus is the important bit direction y uh obj wall so if you remember back to the start of the video direction y uh it's just returning one zero or negative one. Um, yeah, that means that we're only going to be incrementing one or negative one depending on what the player is moving in. Um, just as a safety check, we can also do if uh, direction y does not equal zero. So what that's going to do, that's going to prevent the while loop from entering if the player um, is not moving. Now that may sound a bit daft, but um, hear me out here. Um, if you enter this while loop and direction y equals zero, you're going to be incrementing the y value by zero. And consequently, if you do that, um, yeah, you're never going to collide with the wall object because you're not incrementing the current coordinate. Um, so you just want to prevent that by using negative, well yeah, if direction y does not equal zero, because that completely avoids uh, that error uh, where you're not breaking the while loop, which is what I discussed. So um, then we can do y uh, plus equal direction y. And finally, uh, that is the while loop done, and after we've got the while loop done we can just set y speed to equal zero and then after you've exited the loop and you've now collided successfully with the wall uh, because this is not place meeting you can just set y speed to zero and yeah that's it you're stationary so uh we've got one small error here and i believe that's a bracket so i can just add that there like so and yeah that's fixed the problem okay so um, yeah, I believe that is the Y collision done. So I've got the game room here and I've also put the player in it and a couple of wall objects. So if we run the game now, hopefully our Y will collide. Oh, and there's one more thing I haven't actually done. Um, yeah, we also, I'm going to enlarge this, make it a bit easier actually. Uh, we need to also apply this to the player. So update Y, which we need to do Y plus equal y speed like that and that should work and he stops perfectly so uh, now we've got that done we just need to do the x so uh, yeah update the x speed uh, the x speed is rather easy we can just do x speed equals uh, just a bog standard speed you want to move at, so I could say 5 uh, multiplied by the frame delta. Bear in mind, we're not actually applying the speed value until the very last moment, so it doesn't really matter that it equals 5 at the moment. Um, it might equal 
uh, zero after the collision has occurred. So yeah, one thing to point out as well while I'm mentioning that, always make sure your collision check occurs last when you're actually checking your speed because um, yeah, you always want to make sure it's zero uh, if you've collided with something and have that overrule uh, any other like value being set. So yeah, that should solve that. Uh, check the player's uh, player, well, x direction so we can just do uh, direction x and then that equals the positive x so uh, k underscore right and then minus k underscore left so that's just basically checking the keys that the player has pressed uh, basically like a net movement sort of thing we did that in the previous video um, check the horizontal collision so we can actually copy and paste the vertical but we have to change a few things for this so um, yeah, the first thing is we want to get rid of this Y plus. So control X on all of that, and then control V there. So, and then we want to do X plus X speed times by direction X, like so. And then we want to replace if direction X does not equal naught, uh, and then X plus direction X, and X plus equal direction x and then finally x speed equals naught. So that should be the x collision and it's as simple as that. Uh, we're basically checking the same parameters but only for the x coordinate so that's why we switch the variables around. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we need to do for this. Um, yeah so I believe we need to apply the horizontal movement to the player. So uh, this x speed is just a positive value but we actually need to get that direction now. So to do that we can just do x speed uh, times equals so and then x speed no sorry direction x like so. So that's something I rarely ever use but that is relative multiplication. So what it's actually doing here is simply just x equals uh, x speed multiplied by direction x. That is the same thing as that, I believe. Yeah. So um, just shortens it and keeps it a bit neater, that's all. Um, and finally. Yeah, we just got to update the x coordinate. So x coordinate of the object plus equal x speed. And I believe that should be all of our collision code finished. So we can come out of a workspace now and then close that off. Let's bring it back there. And uh, yeah, let's just test it. That is it. We've got perfect collision. So um, go to the left and to the right and you slide against it perfectly. Um, jump up here and then yeah you can fit up perfectly so obviously that's it perfectly. Um, and also just to double check this collision I've made a small gap here. If I can fit in this it means the collision is perfect. So and it does. So. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial everyone, uh, make sure to hit that like button, comment if you have any problems with this system, um, I will be showing you guys an alternative system on how to negate the need for the while loop in the next tutorial, uh, but until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one, yeah, so, um, adios.